Boxing is always looking for a new fresh face. We've had over the years the likes of Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Muhammad Ali. I am the Remember they're looking for a boxer that can cross over, a commercial type, personality-wise. Someone to endorse. Someone that can be pushed in a pop star status. From the early 90s to the mid-2000s, Oscar De La Hoya was that guy. As De La Hoya's career started winding down, the obvious choice was Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. But unlike De La Hoya, the media did not cling to Mayweather like Oscar. So boxing started looking for that new face to replace Oscar De La Hoya. And out of nowhere, you have this kid that became the crossover guy from De La Hoya and Canelo Alvarez. Clearly Canelo's the guy, the chosen one. And you could already see who the machine is pushing to be the next guy up after Canelo and Ron Garcia. Almost like the golden boy passed the torch to Canelo and now Canelo to Ron Garcia, but someone was lost in the mix. Someone who was supposed to receive that torch from De La Hoya, and that person was Victor Ortiz. Now, as a prospect, Victor Ortiz showed that he very well fit that image. He had the look, the body, the style. He showed power. He showed the fact that he could be the next Oscar De La Hoya, that next golden boy. But Victor stumbled out of the gate. In his fight with Corey Al Alicorn, Victor showed that he wasn't just some hype job. Clearly winning the fight and brutalizing Alicorn, Ortiz got a little ahead of himself and during the break decided he was going to hit Alicorn and wound up knocking him out, which led to a disqualification. Now, after the loss, Ortiz went on an 18-fight winning streak, looking very impressive, winning most of them by either TKO or by knockout. During the midst of that winning streak, Victor Ortiz got rid of his trainer, Robert Garcia, who also was training his brother, Mikey Garcia, and Brandon Bam Bam Rios. Ironically enough, Ortiz chose Robert Garcia's brother, Danny Garcia, to be his trainer, causing the two brothers to not talk to each other for almost a decade. And then came the warning signs. Ortiz got caught leaning, then he landed a right and a left combination. Counter right, and then Ortiz drops Maidana. Ortiz gets dropped from a big right hand. Atlanta short straight right hand. Oh. Make sure there's no blood. The right hook to the body by Ortiz. Ortiz trying to load up a power shot. Magdana Kevin right hand. Like I said, it looks like in his man, he just said, he quit. Here comes Ortiz trying to finish it here in round two. He's got power with both hands. Ten seconds to go. Steps in with the left. Hooks to the body. Madonna trying to fight back. He goes down again. Oscar De La Hoya is motioning to Ortiz, pointing to his head, saying, be smart from ringside. De La Hoya Ortiz is promoter. Madonna chasing Ortiz, yeah, shot an uh, uppercut inside. Ortiz couldn't fight. He actually was moving like a boxer without boxing. They exchange big shots and then hold on. Now they try to fight out of it. Ortiz is cut on the right eyebrow. The way he's got going. Now that's going to give Madonna more energy now after seeing the blood coming. Even though he was cut himself with a slight cut, now he's going to get more energy now. Now the question is going to be, is that cut from a punch?
can't miss with the right hand, and he won't stop throwing it. Ortiz is in big trouble, and he goes down. Oh, it looks like Ortiz doesn't. I think he was waving his hands like he didn't want to continue. And I think stop the left back. ass went enough to. Yes. Let's stop it. Yep. They're going to stop it because of that cut. What a fight. Now. It appeared that Victor had quit in the middle of the sixth round after being dropped by Madonna. But the referee or the doctor referee combination stopped the fight but clearly we saw victor ortiz wave the referee off saying he didn't want to continue but the referee took him over to the corner and brought the doctor up and we saw what happened but the real part about it is max kellerman explained after the fight that he quit but also they said it was a stoppage so it was a lot of confusion over whether he quit or not or whether the referee and the doctor stopped the fight themselves. You can see it to the left of your screen as Ortiz knows now that at this point he's been cut. So, right hand, that caused the swelling under the left eye. Ortiz was starting to take big punishment. Then in the sixth and final round, Maidana could smell the blood literally and figuratively as he just pounced on Ortiz, picked up where he left off in round number five. Ortiz went down. Brought it over to the ringside position, looked at the cut, said could not continue. And the referee called the fight at the sixth round. All right. We just saw a moment in a fighter's career that could define his career. Ortiz was dropped, cut, exhausted, faced with an opponent who refused to lose, and in a moment of weakness, gave up. Thinking at that moment. Well, I kind of figured, uh, you know, hey, it might be a short night, but hey, man, he's an experienced veteran and uh, nothing but all the respect to him. He promptly dropped you and you looked badly hurt. Were you badly hurt? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said no. <laughs> you know. This was an outrage to the boxing world. To see a fighter, an up-and-coming young fighter who has so much expectations, who just was not willing to go out on the shield. In other interviews, we heard him say stuff like, I know I can live to see another day. I had to protect myself. I could have lost one of my eyes and stuff like that. And everybody was outraged that he could say something like that. Now, Ortiz did come back and had a 10-round unanimous decision against Nate Campbell and went on to KO Vivian Harris in the third round. So he was building back up momentum. Then he stepped in the ring with Lamont Peterson, which was a, a fight that really didn't live up to the expectations and lacked luster. It just wasn't the fight that most thought it would be. Ortiz did manage to knock Peterson down twice in the fight, and the fight went to a draw, but most people thought Ortiz indeed won the fight, even though it ended up as a draw. And then finally, Victor Ortiz got what he wanted. A fight with Andre Berto. This would be another step up fight. A fight for Berto's WBC 147 pounds championship. He moved up from 140 pounds to face Berto after Berto had pulled out of a fight, a highly anticipated fight against Shane Mosley due to deaths in the family over in Haiti when the earthquake struck in 2010. Shane Mosley wound up taking on Floyd Mayweather. Despite having early success against Floyd Mayweather, Shane Mosley wound up losing badly. And Andre Berto was now in line to take on Floyd Mayweather, but he still needed a, an opponent to face before the Mayweather collision and in stepped Victor Ortiz. And finally, Victor Ortiz would get his redemption. Victor Ortiz from Winter Haven, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world. A 
right, gentlemen, we went over the... Oh, we're going to find out punch, replay, but, I hope. But it wasn't a clean punch, but normally if you go down there, result of a blow landed anywhere above the waist, and it did. Even though it was a grazing blow, he blocked. He wouldn't have went down there, that didn't hit. Berto staggered again. Straight left hand by Ortiz. And Berto was surprised by that. I'm stuck. Berto paces Ortiz with a big right hand. Ortiz walks through it. Keeps throwing. Berto blocking the shot. Ortiz is trying to get rid of him right here. In January, all, all of our team's punches are very good. There's the right hand again, and now Berto has a knockdown. That's an official knockdown, but it would probably do the balance, but still it's an official knockdown. And you've already seen the damage it's ah. good. What a start. I will not be denied. Ah. Ah. And that's the way he's fighting. Two more hard shots. Another oh, right hook for Ortiz. Big left hand by Berto. Ortiz well, walked right through it. There you see the legs. That's why he's in the room. Stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Just Ortiz. I think <laughs> making the distinction for you. <laughs> down goes Ortiz on a perfect right hand shot by Berto. Second knockdown of the fight for Berto. This is the sixth round. It was the round that he loved. It's been a great round for Berto. Yeah. After he was in so much trouble through the first five. His uppercut is good too. Now Ortiz is gonna oh! But mark it down, baby. This is unreal. Oh my God! Trying to be great, man. Loses this fight. And for any fight, that three, six rounds to three, Victor Ortiz is not risk, and he just got hit with two big shots. This was excitement. This was war. Barring a stunning reversal on the judges' cards, Victor Ortiz has the victory of a lifetime. And new WBC welterweight champion of the world, vicious Victor Ortiz. With the win over Andre Berto, this put Victor Ortiz smack dab in the upper echelon of the welterweight division with the likes of Floyd Money Mayweather and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Because Berto was next in line to fight Floyd, Ortiz, by beating Berto, became the guy to get the shot at taking on boxing's pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world. And Floyd would use every trick in the book to get on the young Victor Ortiz's oh, skin. Oh, I'm gonna get him to destroy this kid. Give me that mic, 24 Shelly. Give me that mic. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night it's all live at the MGM Grand. After all of the posturing, finally the fight happened. I gave the GOAT a huge chance, obviously, for my WBC crown. And, you know, he capitalized and he taught me some lessons, man. Um, yeah. Some of those lessons led to, you know, um, unintentional fouls. On, I mean, mine was very intentional, obviously. His, he throws a, the hook and he hits you with the elbow. Does he mean to do it? Probably not. But he, he throws it quick and fast, started closing my eye. I kept telling the ref. Ref kept saying, oh, keep finding Ortiz, keep finding Ortiz. I kept telling the corner, keep finding in the corner, sends me the headbutt. Now, mind you, 161 fights as an amateur. And 26 as a pro, I've never done any dirty stuff ever leading up to that point. I deserve that. Wow. And all of a sudden, this is happening. I keep telling the ref, now I'm seeing double out of one eye. I was scared. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, my eye goes blank, black. So now I'm trying to focus with one eye. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm blind. So then I told the coaches, dude, he's hurting my eye, X, Y, and Z. Then he said, Tell the ref, I've been telling the refs, it's round one. They said, headbutt him, headbutt his A. And I go, oh, you kidding me? I, I said no in the corner, but then in the heat of the moment, heat of the battle, I don't know, man. It's just stupidity took over. The young Victor Ortiz showed up, 23 years old. And then I got even younger, but I felt so bad that I just did that to such a great fighter that I gave him a kiss on the cheek. I'm sorry, Floyd, but you're hurting me, man. I gave him a hug. 
and I meant it, man. And you know, I became a human 23 year old for a second, and you know, I paid for everything. So I am forever regretful of that moment where I decided to do that ugly dirtiness to, to a good fighter, a great fighter, you know? So, I mean, yeah. lesson, lesson learned. Now, Ortiz did say uh, he regretted the headbutt and took responsibility for it. But on the other hand, he said it was his corner's idea and the reason why his corner told him the headbutt was for retaliation for a forearm that Floyd Mayweather was throwing. But ironically enough, if you go back and watch the fight, Victor Ortiz was trying to use his head early in the fight, at least as early as the second round. And the second time he attempted was just as obvious as in the fourth round as he tried to leave. He tried to leave his feet and lunge into Floyd Mayweather's jaw. So I find it a little hard to believe that his corner told him to headbutt him in the fourth round for retaliation when he was already trying to headbutt him in the second round. Another bit of controversy that need to be put to bed is uh, a lot of people feel like Joe Cortez mismanaged that uh, moment by not saying number one. He A lot of people felt like he did not say fight, but what he did say, well, let's go. And he, he was saying that earlier in the fight as well. Every time he broke them and wanted them to start fighting, he said, let's go. And also, when um, after he said, let's go, when he turned his head, he turned his head because he was looking at the, uh, the timekeeper and trying to find out had the bell hurt on. So yes, he turned his head and whatnot, but he technically, he didn't do anything wrong and Floyd Mayweather had every right to hit him because he had said, let's go. It seemed that the public opinion swayed in Victor Ortiz's favor. And he really didn't seem to lose anything in the loss. In fact, some people actually gave him credit and thought <laughs> he was coming on at the end of the, uh, or what was the last round of the fight. And Floyd had cheated to beat him. Ortiz was already starting to get his Golden Boy status when another young dynamic Mexican fighter by the name of Saul Alvarez burst on the scene. The two fighters, both under the Golden Boy banner, were starting to be compared to each other. Even though Ortiz was campaigning at 147 and Alvarez at 154, a lot of people wanted to know who would win if the two was to face each other in the ring. Oscar, being the businessman that he is, put the fight together. After Canelo Alvarez got his one-sided victory over Shane Mosley, Ortiz was to take on Andre Berto in a rematch of their 2011 thriller. But because Berto was popped for steroids in a pre-fight drug test, Josito Lopez took the fight against Ortiz on a month's notice and moved up to welterweight, basically making this a tune-up fight for Ortiz. So all Ortiz had to do was win his tune-up fight against Lopez, and he would move up to face Canelo Alvarez at 154. But once again, Ortiz would hit a stumbling block. In the package of 140 pounder moving up to 147, called the Riverside Rocket. 140 pounder against a true 147 pounder. Wow, they're banging to the win. Hurt. Oh, oh my. Nice right hand. By a crushing right hand. So he has to be very careful. Clinches. 12 round fights. They bleed them and we're halfway. Showtime pay per view match. Really, does he have to win? But he has to make sure it's essentially a little bigger and stronger. Oh, nice. Ooh, beautiful uppercut. right uppercut wow. by Ortiz, followed by a straight left hand by the straight left Victor hand. Victor Ortiz it's found himself up, in a slug fest with a guy that he was supposed to walk through that wasn't even really a welterweight. And no matter how hard he fought, no matter how hard he tried to enforce his size and will on Lopez, he just would not give up and just kept coming right back for more, living up to the name Riverside Rocky. Stepping up. 
here, and then Ortiz coming back. Left to right hand as he steps over, digs this evening. No fear. Found a way to land the uppercut. Oh. May have been blocked. Left hook connecting for Josecito Lopez, oh. followed by a right hand. Look at the exchange. Lopez. And Victor Ortiz backs up. This was being pushed back and got nailed with this right hand as he was moving. Again, oh. a round that's close. Victor Ortiz. Ortiz was ahead of Lopez on all three scorecards at the time of the stoppage. But what nobody knew is that Victor broke his jaw in the fifth round and had felt a weird sensation because he couldn't close his mouth at all throughout the fight. Victor fought four or five rounds with a broken jaw, and every time he would throw a punch, he would have to bring his hand back in and push his chin back up because he couldn't keep his jaw closed. And in the ninth round, he suffered another breakage of his jaw, actually having his jaw broken two places in the Josito Lopez fight. According to Ortiz's trainer, the ringside doctor stopped the fight because all of the blood Ortiz was swallowing from internal bleeding. Boxing fans were outraged. Maybe it was the fact that he lost to what was thought to be an inferior opponent. Maybe because fans were set to see Ortiz versus Canelo Alvarez. But what hurt him the most was the fact that he had quit against Madonna earlier. And there it appeared that this was a, a pattern. And that just maybe Victor Ortiz was a talented boxer who lacked heart. But the reality was Ortiz showed nothing but heart by fighting for four and a half rounds with a broken jaw. Victor Ortiz took time off to heal his broken jaw and wound up catching a roll with Sylvester Stallone and Ronda Rousey in Expendables 3. But Victor didn't forget about the naysayers and the trash talk that was thrown his way while he was down and out. Don't forget about that. How does it be my job? <laughs> what did he say? When uh, Cecito broke his jaw, oh. he asked him, huh, yeah, how does he break my jaw? On top of being ridiculed by fans and former stable mates, Josito Lopez was the one that got the shot at Canelo Alvarez, which, by the way, Canelo Alvarez ran through him. But in Lopez's defense, he had moved up from 140 to 147 to fight Ortiz, then immediately from 147 to 154 to take on Saul Alvarez. But at the end of the day, Canelo Alvarez was just too big for him. The power. Lopez doubles up on the jab and goes downstairs to the body. And now it's Lopez opening up, but again. And with the body attack as a staple for the third straight round with Sen. And yet, Alvarez again going downstairs with the left hands to the body. Ten seconds left in the round. And referee Joe Cortez intervenes. He's After destroying Josito Lopez, Canelo Alvarez then took on Austin Trout in a unification title match at 154. It was competitive. But Canelo Alvarez got the early lead with the knockdown, and Austin Trout, trying to come from behind, fought desperately, playing in the Canelo Alvarez counterpunching hands. Now, after the Trout win, Canelo Alvarez got his shot at Floyd Money Mayweather, and it didn't end any better for him than it did for Victor Ortiz. And even though Victor Ortiz was on a two-fight losing streak, he could always think about the fact that he did better against Floyd Mayweather than Canelo Alvarez did. Let me get a picture with you also. Yeah, brother. Any, anybody who's uh, who's content with that with that performance between Floyd and I, that's just uh, that's not right. We're not done. It's far from over. Victor, I'll tell you, bro. I'll tell you this much. 
I'll definitely, in three or two rounds, I'll be a lot more excited than our dear friend, what's his name again? <laughs> I think it's Canelo or something like that. Oh. Something like that. I don't know. I heard, yeah, cinnamon, whatever. So I take it, I take it, you and Canelo got some. Nah, you know what? I just don't appreciate on my layoff somebody had to put me down because my jaw broke in one fight. And what do you say? I don't know, I go do your research. I hear things and I just, I don't even keep up with this online stuff, but when it gets to me, I'm kind of like, wow, all right. I could I could have respected somebody like him, but. According to Ortiz, Canelo Alvarez has been taking shots at him. And it's only natural that he would want to get Canelo in the ring anyway, as we said earlier. The two had an a in-house rivalry going on at Golden Boy for years now. But he also took offense of the fact that the guy that knocked him off, finally ready to make his return after almost a two-year layoff, Victor Ortiz needed a win against Luis Colazzo if he wanted to get Canelo Alvarez in the ring and definitely if he planned on getting a rematch with Floyd Mayweather. Now, Luis Colazzo was relatively an unknown boxer from New York who was a whole lot better than his 34-5 and five record indicated and also has been in the ring with some of boxing's better fighters. Losing to the likes of Shane Mosley, Ricky Hatton, and Andre Berto. Now, early in the fight, Victor Ortiz showed a little rust but still also showed signs of his old self and was starting to dominate Luis Colazzo. But something happened, and Colazzo all of a sudden started to get the best of Victor Ortiz. And it seemed like Ortiz just didn't know how to make the adjustments. It's more than left hand behind it by Ortiz. Now, after the Colazzo loss, not only did Victor Ortiz have the stigma of being a fighter that has talent with no heart, but now also he's being looked at as a fighter with no chin. Losing to Colazzo on January 30th of 2014, Victor Ortiz didn't fight again until December. And he wound up putting together a two-fight winning streak, going up against Manuel Perez, 22-10-1, and, and Gilberto Sanchez-Leon, 34-13-2. Ortiz might have been back on track in the boxing ring, but outside of the ring, that was definitely not the case. In July 2015, he was arrested on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon and being accused of beating up a fan at a country music concert in Pasadena. According to the newspaper, Ortiz pled guilty to the misdemeanor battery and was sentenced to three years on probation, ESPN reported. After getting himself back together with two tune-up fights, he got right back in the ring against longtime rival Andre Berto for their rematch. And similar to the first fight, Bombs was being dropped early, and Andre Berto wound up hitting the canvas. After the knockdown, Victor Ortiz seemed to be pretty much in control of the fight. But after Andre Berto got his legs back under him in the fourth round, he dropped the bomb on Victor Ortiz, leaving him stunned. Now, Ortiz did get up. Got to give him credit for that. But he didn't stay on his feet much longer leaving a horrible taste in the mouths of the people in the crowd who booed Ortiz and did not believe that he was actually hurt to the point where he could not continue. A lot of people actually thought that he faked being out on his feet and the crowd attacked Ortiz on his way out of the stadium throwing food and debris in his direction. I, I still thought, you know, it was, it was whoever landed the first big shot would probably be the one who won. Victor dropped Berto, but didn't really hurt him, and they didn't try to finish him. When Berto hurt Victor, he knew. He went after him, 
and uh, everybody's seen. You know, Victor just didn't didn't have enough anymore. He just couldn't couldn't really you know, continue. Are you, are you surprised that he? I mean, he didn't necessarily quit, but he didn't respond to the referee. I mean, did that surprise you at all, Mikey, or is that kind of come to expect? He tried to make it seem like he didn't quit. I mean, from what I've seen, and I think a lot of people will agree, he quit on himself. And when he, that's not the first time that, that it's happened. He don't want to make it seem like that. He, you know, stood there. He got up at the very, very last second thinking, you know, Jack's just going to stop it. Jack's giving him an opportunity. Ask him. And he pretends and acts like he's hurt or, you know, waiting for the ref to stop it so he don't look like he quit. But he quit. He, he don't have it. He just don't have it. He's never had it. We were sparring back when we were 16, 17 years old in our gym, and I'm the first one to tell Robert and my dad, hey, you know what? This guy don't, this guy don't got it. He, he doesn't have the heart. He's going to probably quit one day. And at that time, he was too young, whatever, but he ended up doing it. He did it with Maidana. I did it now. He did it with, you know, Floyd. He did it with, you know, Colossal. And every single time, I mean, he's been dropped and whatever, but when, it, when the fight is stopped, it seems like he just decides not to. You know? Only five months after Victor Ortiz lost in the rematch to Andre Bordo, according to the Ventura County Star and other media outlets, he was arrested in September 2016 after being pulled over with 0.15 blood alcohol content. He pled guilty and was put on probation for three months, the star reported. The loss to Andre Berto did manage to get him a fight with Saul, just not Saul Alvarez, Saul Corral, when Victor Ortiz made his debut on the PBC Boxing. And he got the late stoppage over Corral, earning him a shot against Devin Alexander, which turned out to be a very entertaining fight, a fight that some people considered a candidate for fight of the year, which was huge for Ortiz and Alexander going to a draw with neither men could afford to take a loss trying to climb up the very deep welterweight division. It appeared that Ortiz might have finally got his boxing career somewhere back on track. Scheduled to fight John Molina Jr. on what would have been his third straight headlining of a PBC event. But the fight was canceled after Ortiz was arrested on allegations of rape and sexual assault Tuesday via TMZ Sports. Molina announced that the fight was canceled Wednesday in a video on Instagram on his own personal page. In December of 2020, Victor Ortiz had the rape allegations dropped against him and was free to once again try to continue his boxing career. It had been three years since Victor had been in the boxing ring against Devin Alexander and it was only right that he would get in there with somebody who was just as inactive as him and that person was Robert Guerrero. The fight turned out to be a snooze fest with Guerrero winning on all three scorecards, 96-94. And it appeared to be the end of Victor Ortiz's career. But ironically enough, Victor fought this year in 2022. Ortiz got the unanimous decision after surviving a 10th round knockdown, leaving the arena a little bruised up. Maybe that was the end of Victor Ortiz's boxing career. Who knows? But one thing for sure, he definitely had an interesting career. And that's pretty much all I got this head bustin' boxing's own fight doctor. I am out.